Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications. Last year, the Chautauqua County Health Department issued a do not drink advisory to the village of Mayville. The agency had detected levels of a certain kind of PFAS chemical in the city's public water well. This compound, while not regulated at the state or federal level, has been found to have harmful effects on humans in early studies. So what happened? And where did this chemical come from? I'll let you know at the end of this video, but Mayville is not the only location where contaminants have been found in well water. And in today's video, we'll cover the top things you need to know about well testing. Number one, a well test measures the presence and number of certain germs and contaminants present in the water. To do so, well testing checks for several water quality indicators and contaminants. Number two, water quality indicators are, as the name would suggest, indicators that may reveal the presence of contaminants. The most common water quality indicators are total coliforms and fecal coliforms. These are similar tests, but they test for the total count of all coliform or fecal coliform bacteria. Now it's important to note here that most coliform bacteria do not cause harm, but it is difficult to test for just those particular strains that may cause sickness, so the total count of all coliform bacteria is used instead. pH is also tested, since highly acidic water has a higher likelihood of eroding pipes, and thus may indicate the presence of heavy metals or other pipe residue. In addition to water quality indicators, well testing will also directly test for certain toxic compounds, such as nitrates, VOCs, heavy metals, and a whole range of other chemical and biochemical compounds that may be present in your locality. Number three, you should have your well tested once a year. Water quality can change abruptly, and this is why regular testing is vital. But you don't want to just stop at annual testing. You will also want to test your well if you notice a change in the water taste or color, or if you have heard of recent problems in your area, such as other tests coming back positive for contaminants. Number four, your state or local health or environmental department may be able to test your well for you. Visit your local health or environmental department's website to find out how to submit a water sample for testing. You should also give your local health or environmental department a call to determine what potential contaminants have been found in the region and which you should request testing for in your next well test. Number five, if your well test comes back positive for certain contaminants, does this mean that you can no longer use it? Well, not exactly. There are options. You can start by thoroughly cleaning your well, but depending on what contaminants showed up in your test, you may want to install a filtration, distillation, or disinfection system. And you can visit CDC's website for more information on the different kinds of systems available to you. Number six, there are also ways to protect your well from contamination in the first place. First of all, keep all hazardous materials away from your well. If you have a private well on your site, it's a good idea to overall minimize use of compounds that can cause contamination, such as fertilizer or pesticides. But if you do have to use these materials, make sure that you are using best practices and do your best to protect your water. When you are first building a well or inspecting it prior to purchasing a property, make sure that the well is at an appropriate distance from all sources of contaminants, including septic tanks and leach fields, or other storage areas for hazardous material. And remember that you also have to be aware of where your neighbors have placed their septic tanks, leach fields, or other hazardous storage containers as well. Regularly check that the well cover cap is intact and at least one foot above the ground. And finally, remember that wells have a lifespan. You'll want to decommission any well that is older than 20 years. But let's return to the village of Mayville. What happened and how was the water contaminated? Well, eventually the village determined that firefighting foam used in training exercises at the former high school was to blame for the contamination. The village is now suing the manufacturers of the firefighting foam over the contamination. The village alleges that the manufacturers had known since the 1970s that the chemicals in the foam would not break down once in the environment. Furthermore, the village also alleges that by the end of the 1980s, the companies knew that workers exposed to these chemicals showed higher incidence of cancer. Fortunately, after further testing, private wells in the village indicated no presence of the chemical. But this story highlights why it is important to test all well water. As frightening as this tale may be, I do actually take some comfort in it. 
After all, it is a clear indication of a local public health system working. Remember, the chemical involved is not currently regulated by either New York State or the federal government. So kudos to Chautauqua County and the village of Mayville for protecting their citizens. Now, do you have any stories about well testing or wells in general? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com slash glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down properties at gokchecapital.com slash listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening, and more to come.